Are we live? Yes. Good evening. Welcome to the soundless intro. <laughs> Sorry, we, we got in a little late and are hooking up the new computer. We have all the stuff, just it wasn't compiled. And so, yeah, hopefully though. But just for a week. bonus, if you stick around at the end, we'll play the intro at the end. <laughs> It's Mixed Up Thursday. We're going to mix it up in here. Okay, that's interesting. I like that. The ending first. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but, hopefully you have sound now. If you don't, please scream at us. And, we're going to do a top ten strategic family games this evening. I have a feeling our lists are completely different. Yeah, I have a feeling... This is just my gut feeling, because I haven't seen your list, obviously. Hold on. I'm still doing some housekeeping Guts. real quick. It's still doing some housekeeping. Um, trying to get the chat up and all that good stuff. Yay! Right. Thank you, Kabuki. All right. So, I think your list is going to be lighter than mine. Okay. I think you're going to to be more on the family side of things, and I'm going to be more on the strategic th side of things. I totally could see this. So, that that's just my personal guess of how the list is going to go. Okay. I don't think my games are super heavy, but my games aren't also... You know, a five-year-old's not going to play my games, right? Ah. See? I went the family route. <laughs> so you're going to get two very different lists. This actually will be good because you can get a good spread out of this depending on what you're going for here. So, yeah. yes. I I had a trouble ranking mine because, A, I was trying to think of how strategic they were, but then, B, I also, there's quite an age gap in mind mm. for family wise yeah so i don't know if you could really say they're truly ranked per se but i'll let you be the judge of that as i explain them um so let's back up a little bit and kind of level set okay so a strategic game means there is some decision making that yes. goes on mm -hmm. that will affect the outcome of the game yes so it's not just random rolls or random yes. card draws or there is some 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 decisions like I, I want to go this route. I want to do this thing instead yeah. of doing this thing, right? And on top of that, like mine, I noticed I had a pretty decent variety of game mechanisms involved with choosing this, which I thought was kind of cool. So it's not just, you know, like I said, a decision making like should I do one thing or the other thing. Sometimes there's multiple dis you know things to choose right. from, so it's not like a kind of a binary choice. So I think I, I don't know. I, th I hopefully this will be. At least if you're looking for, like, the family games with smaller children side or young children, I think there's a good variety there. And then as they get older, like... Yeah, see, mine are more the, the 10, direction the, more, the so. 10, 12-year-old okay. age area. Okay. Maybe a little younger than that. Yeah. So. So mine will work for, like, people that are... Kids that are newer to gaming and smaller, younger kids than your group. It, I, overall. I, I just kind overall, of eliminated kids' games out of my list. Because I think that's yeah. a different list for me. The, yeah. the top 10 kids games is different than top 10 family games to me. Yeah. So, so there you are. There you are. So this All will right. be interesting. I think this will be fun. I, I, I look forward to some good opinions and comments on afterwards what you guys think about when you think of family games and stuff. Because, yeah, I think about our group playing these games frequently and that sort of thing or have the ability to play these games. That was kind of where I went. All right, so before we go much further, yes, I'm going to try to keep an eye on the chat. This is the first time we're doing a top ten with this computer. So you already saw we had a technical difficulty. <laughs> but, yeah, we do need to make sure that everything's rocking and rolling. So. so apparently when I've learned something tonight, okay, when I plug in the microphone, it turns the speak computer speakers off. Nice. Is that an automatic setting you can it's a, I, I, I don't know, but I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> that's why we didn't have audio. And that's why he's my <laughs> IT guy. All right. <laughs> All right. So what's your number 10? My number 10 is Outfoxed. And I love this one, especially with younger kiddos and people that are new to, to oh, the, gaming. Oh, the, the, the little fade in. I have to change that. Go Ooh, ahead. Okay, Go okay. Ahead. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> IT comments the whole time. <laughs> Outfoxed is great because it's, it's a deduction game. And so you're teaching kids how to, you know, draw some conclusions from clues that are given. But it's not one of those that kind of panders to the kitty crowd. It really makes them think. And they're going to have to work together as a team. So you've got the cooperative aspect, but they're all making decisions on it. They're going to walk to a certain place and they get to choose a clue. And then the thing's going to tell them whether the guilty, the, the, the fox that stole the chicken pot pie, whether or not it was wearing a hat, for example. So then they, all of the... the 
pictures that they've exposed of the different foxes. They all have their own little photos with everything. And they can eliminate the ones that have the hats because that person's obviously innocent or whatever. And so they're trying to work this out. And they have to do this before the little fox walks all the way to the escape. <laughs> it's a really cute game. And I like the fact that really it, it makes them think enough that, like, Caitlin enjoys still playing it, and it's engaging enough that they like working together with it. So older kids like to work with the younger kids on it and stuff. I, it's a really neat game. And it's one that I don't think the adults mind playing with them or watching and helping. So, pretty fun family game. We have a blast with it. Yeah, it definitely has some thinking to it. Now, I don't know... There's a lot of randomness in that, but I guess that's okay. I mean, you still have to make a decision whether you're going to go for this or go for that. Exactly, right? and that's one of the reasons I put it at 10, because there's not a whole lot of extra strategy, and this definitely goes to a younger crowd, I think, overall. But, yeah, they still have to make some pretty decent decisions, especially if they've exposed, say, 10 of the cards. They're going to have a lot of, okay, I need to think about this now. They, <laughs> the guilty person is walking with a cane and is wearing a... You know, they have to, like, take these clues right. and put them together. And they have to remember them because they only get to look at the clue once. And then they have to remember it the rest of the game. So that's kind of neat, too. I, I like that. Yep. All right. Good one. I, I, I'm, I'm strong. I, I, I was correct, and I believe we won't have a single crossover. Probably no. not. <laughs> so Probably my not. number 10 is a little <laughs> heavier than that. Is it now? My number 10 is... Ooh, such a good pick. Alhambra. Oh, a lovely pick. I do, I do love so, it. So Alhambra is a, uh, I guess, an, a, is it bidding, auction? It's not an auction. It's more of a drafting. Yeah. Anyway, you have, you have uh, some, some tiles out there that you can dra purchase, and you have like five different currencies? There's a ton of different currencies. But anyway, each four currencies. So there's mm -hmm. you, pay, you pay for each of the tiles based on a different currency, and each tile has a price. So you have to use your cards to purchase those, and you have to pay, obviously, the correct currency. And if you play the exact amount, you get to do a second purchase. Um, so there is a, there's some strategy involved in terms of which tile you collect, because at the end of the game there is a uh, majority. You get points for having a majority. And there is some strategy on purchasing the tiles in terms of building the wall around your city. And, Which is fun. And there is the strategy of when you also take money as well. And it's, it's you're trying to get build to get exact amounts to make those multiple purchases. And do you hold on to your, your money and try to get exacts or do you go ahead and buy something right off? So it's pretty light. I think it's a good family game. It, yeah. It, um, there's not real honestly. It's it's buy a tile or t you know take money. It's not there's not much to it, right? Yep. So Alhambra, my number ten. Nice, nice. My number nine is probably I yes the last one where I'd say it's definitely leaning towards the littler kids and the rest of them start kind of leaning towards the older kids. But this one is best treehouse ever, and this one I think really can touch all ages because you can get as you know, strategic, because you can start playing as adults, you know, the parents, sometimes you might feed your kids some cards that you know that might help them a little bit, um, and you can get meaner with that <laughs> as, as the kids are older with it, but the cutesy little art, and the, we have a lot of fun talking about it and stuff, and so, like, definitely, probably more with the smaller families, but still a really cute game. You're building a, um, a tree house, and the strategy here is with you, you're drafting cards, but when you're building your treehouse, A, you have to keep it balanced, and B, the balance is dependent on you need to match colors or make sure you don't block off a color. So you have to think about what kind of cards. You kind of have to plan ahead a little bit, too, as you're building. So they have to think about that, or they're going to paint themselves into a corner, basically, as they're drafting their cards, and then they run out of places to build. Well, yeah, and, and on top of that, it's another one of those games that it's majority, right? So you mm -hmm. have to kind of keep an eye on what other people are doing, and there's a level of strategy there. It's like, oh, wow, she's running away with this color, so I just need to stop working yeah. on that one, yeah. right? Um, if you don't have that strat you know, strategic thinking, you're just going to just draft, 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 and yeah. not pay any attention to what's going on. Yeah. But there's a whole another level, and then there's a level on top of that of potentially like hate drafting people. Like, yeah. you, you know this person wants this particular color, or needs this particular color, you could go ahead and take it. You know, 
So there's all kinds of yeah. levels on that one. Yeah, and it's kind of fun to watch, like, to see the evolution. Like, when Nessa first played it, she was definitely just slapping down stuff. Right. And now she's really thinking it through, and sometimes she actually is starting to do some picky drafting, thinking ahead, and it's really fun to watch as they start to make these thought processes and kind of grow in their strategy. So I like that game for that reason. It's great as they're learning the game and getting yep. into it more. Yep. 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 So fun one. Mr. Right. House Emma. My number nine is again heavier. What a shock. <laughs> My number nine is Royal. Ooh, good pick. Royal. Another good one. So this is kind of an intro into area control maybe it's a mm -hmm. pretty light area control game where you um, are putting cubes out on the board and you're trying to influence not only influence countries but influence different types of nobles as well so you're trying to get country majorities as well as noble majorities so there is many different paths you can go it's fun. Um, there is um, you can get you can focus on all on the on different Mobiles, you can focus in on the countries. There's the cards, the collecting the cards. There's, there's strategy on on how you draw the cards. You kind of draw cards like Ticket to Ride style, so you don't you can choose to take what's there or take randoms. And there's all sorts of different things you can do. But it's really light, and I mm -hmm. think any even younger kids could probably play this game fairly easily. Yeah, yeah, you might have to guide them a little bit at first because there's several different areas where they kind of have to watch, keep track of the. Who's running away with the game? But right. Yeah, right, I think right. I think you're right. This is an awesome game to start learning the different layers of strategy. And, and so. yeah, like yeah, you can build on that. This is mm -hmm. kind of an introductory game, and you can go to something bigger that's area control. I'm not going to spoil say what say any names. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. it could be later on my list. But, yeah. But it's a, it's a stepping stone, just like some worker oh, yeah. placement games are stepping stones. This is a stepping stone for area control. Yep. I dig it. All right. It's a good one. It's your number eight. 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 Hey, look at you keeping track of numbers. I have the numbers in front up. of me here. I know, you have help. <laughs> All right, so that didn't stop you before, though. No, it didn't. <laughs> so my number eight, again, a little bit older crowd probably, but not necessarily. I've Depends it already. On Did you? So might as well just tell you what it is. <laughs> no mystery here. Um, the Tales and Games series in particular is just really great, and one of my favorites, the favorite that we own I'll put it that way because we have one that I really like now that we don't own. But this is the Hare and the Tortoise. And I love the fact that, A, you can build the racetrack differently if you desire. So you can mix up the game a little bit and kind of make it fun. And, a, B, you've got one or two animals, depending on how you, what card you pick, that you're going to bet on to win the race. Win or get first, second, or third because you get a certain amount of points for each. And then as you play your cards the number of cards and they each each animal moves a distinct way based on how many cards you put down and so there's strategy involved and everyone's rotating though through each round so you're trying to get your character to go ahead and maybe screw up another character and this and that i mean there's a lot going on with that game and i really love it and they again each animal has their own special little ability it's really fun to watch that game, like Nessa was funny to watch that evolve because first she couldn't even keep a secret and we always knew what she was going to root for because she's like, oh, I didn't get the sheep card or something. And you're like, oh, you know, but now, man, she clams right up and she's just, you know, she's actually getting excited about the cards and trying to be a little more strategic with it. It's pretty fun. And, and yeah, Caitlin's already obviously got the tactics down for that one pretty good. She likes playing it too. It's kind of more of a relaxing light game for her now though <laughs> so that's pretty fun it's yeah i mean there is the, the the strategy in that is kind of subtle right because yeah you want to you have to decide do i want to play my cards now for the ones i you know from the ones i want to win yeah or do i hold on to them and have a big turn yeah and, and not not necessarily let people know early on if you're playing certain cards all the time they're going to figure out which ones is yours right and you got to kind of hold back a little bit and maybe help other characters out so yep. there's some strategies there yep, yep 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 so that's the fun one and it's a good family game too it's one of those that we can throw down with people that haven't played games before that are family members and everyone can dive in and play and that's one thing i really like about that too so yep and uh we haven't we've yet to play downforce but that's another racing game that i think yes. would be family weight yeah. the only thing about downforce though I, again we haven't played it yet we're probably going to play it maybe this weekend Ooh. um but uh what was I going to say? I don't know. The, it can be mean. That game can be mean. Oh. You can intentionally cause people to get blocked and things like oh, that. Dear. So I'm, I'm curious <laughs> to see how it plays. It, and if, it'll be interesting, yeah. 
All right. I'm curious. My number eight. What's your number eight? Is again heavier than yours. What a shock. <laughs> I'm so surprised. I think I'm going to say that the whole time. But yes, I'll you stop. Are. I'll stop now. <laughs> My number eight is. Oh, sure, you leave mystery for yours. Interesting. A racing game with more strategy. Jamaica. Good pick, though. Jamaica! That's so much fun. I love that game. Jamaica is a racing game with fighting. What more do you need? Um, Pirates! Hello! <laughs> so, <laughs> at, at its heart is a racing game, but there is a lot of other things going on because you have... Um, your, sh- your ship has limited space to put s- supplies like cannons and money and... What else do you have? Food and things like that. So, you have to strategically decide, okay... Do I want to keep lots of cannons for fighting? Do I want yeah. to uh, have lots of food so I can just go go around the board really fast? Do I want do I want to build up on gold because at the end of the game gold is victory points. So which point what point do you switch from collecting cannons and food to, to getting gold to, to boost your score at the end? Never, of the no. Just <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's just a super light game and the combat's super simple. You just you just. You roll, roll dice. You, you, you bid a certain number of gunpowder to adjust your roll, and you roll a die, and high roll wins. And so it's super simple. The combats are simple to do. Yeah. Um, it's pretty intuitive. There's some there's some special power cards that might be tricky for the younger kids, but um, I think um, as long as you explain to them what's going on, I think it should be okay. Yeah, well, and even if you wanted to kind of bust it down a little bit and not use some of that, then, you know, it'd be okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. And there's an expansion... About to come out. Well, it's it's effectively out, but for the U, us in the U.S. that haven't uh, snuck an early copy, it's coming out soon. Whoa. So I'm excited Ooh, about that. Interesting. And it actually supposedly streamlines some of the game and adds a little more at the same time, which doesn't make sense, but it does. Yep, so, yep, yep. so it takes away some of those special cards, and instead of having all those special cards, you hire crewmen that uh, that duplicate those special cards plus other things. Yep. So so you, you hire a crewman and it tells you specifically how, how it works. So it kind of yeah. streamlines that part of it, right? Yeah. All right. So it's fun. My number eight. Good stuff, good stuff. Jamaica. My number seven is kind of a lump of games and you'll understand when you see it, of course. And that is Carcassonne. And I also kind of want to include my first Carcassonne in that because it's got the... It's like the beginner's Carcassonne. Although, quite frankly, I think it almost has the same level of strategy as the plain, basic Carcassonne. Uh, almost. Almost. It's simplified it some. But for a kid, I think it's an awesome. So if you have a little kid, start that My First Carcassonne. That's one of Nessa's favorite games. That has been so much fun. I really like playing that one. It's really cute. But it's almost like a, a reversal of Carcassonne because you put the little people on as you go and as you as you complete the roads that is and um, I don't know it's just it's kind of an interesting scoring and, and I really enjoy the the game with that because they set up the tiles so that they always fit so yeah, it's you, easier yeah. for them to place them and, and learn how to build the map and it's a great stepping stone to actual Carcassonne where you've got the different scoring levels and things like that based off of where you put your meeples in the game. So. Well, yeah, and, the ba- and Carcassonne adds the cities making the buildings and the monasteries and mm-hmm. the farmers and a lot of other stuff. Yeah, so. there's so much cool stuff going on with that. So it's almost like because they have so many different versions of Carcassonne and expansions and this and that now, it's great because you can literally build your family strategy game there from the ground up from very little to older kids adults family and it's another one i think that's relatively simple to explain and that people of all ages pretty much and you could and, and you could you one. could to, to 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 make the the transition easier from my first Carcassonne to Carcassonne, you could house rule some things like for oh yeah for like example, awesome. probably the most comp- one of the most complicated things about Carcassonne is the how the farmers work yeah and you could just pull that out, out and not play with the, the farmers or whatever they're called. Yeah, just don't score the that's, fields. Yeah, don't do fields for yeah. scoring and then add that in later like it's an extra thing. And that's a good idea. Yeah, so really fun. And there's there's so much going on in Carcassonne. I don't know. You just you're building the world. You're placing the meeples. You're trying to strategize about when you want to put what where, and you also can position things on purpose to block other people or set it up so that they're not going to get as great a score as you will. And there's, right. there's so much going on with that. So, all right. Good one. My number seven is, I don't know. I can't say. I, I don't have my list best. in front of me. I'm using the computer. <laughs> 
My number seven is Stone Age. I suspect this will be higher on someone else's list. Stone Age. This is your introduction to worker placement. Um, Such a good intro. I think um, almost families of almost all ages, you know, Nessa, Nessa plays it. Um, she needs a little kind of nudging here and there. I'm not like, anymore. Well, <laughs> kind of what direction she needs to oh. go. But she understands how the, all, everything works, how to collect the goods. And, yeah. Um, sometimes she doesn't put enough meeples or not enough, or too many meeples on the resource places and things like that. Yeah. But, but uh, it's a great introduction to worker placement. It's super straightforward. Um, it teaches you things like um, mitigating... Your your dice in terms of yeah the little uh, hammers the, using the hammers for that and also yeah. for kind of I guess I don't know if it's it's kind of introductory statistics in terms of okay if I want two resources at this spot how many dice do I need to put right is yeah is two enough or three enough or do I need to do four or five it depends because each of the resources is a different value so you kind of kind of add more if you're Getting the more expensive resources, yeah. you need to add more dice, and you can't just say, "Okay, I need two things. I'll just put two dice." That doesn't yeah. work. You have to learn, how, you know, use some strategy in terms yeah. of how many dice and reserving your hammers. When to use your hammers to modify the dice, and there's just a lot going on in a pretty simple game, I think. Yep, and that's another great one you could throw down with family, all ages, and everybody can get into it. So, there you go. That's mine. Number seven. That's good. 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 Stone Age. Not too sure. We'll, we'll hear about more about it later, so I won't talk too much. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, my number six is King Domino. This one, I think probably everyone's going to agree, is a great throwdown family game, especially if you are bringing in older generations that always play dominoes or things like that, because all it is is tricked up dominoes, so they're instantly going to know how to play the game. And then, you know, like the kiddos love the cute graphics on this, and kind of a fun tweak on Domino, so it's kind of bridging that generational gap, getting to play a lot of those games that maybe, you know, a lot of younger people haven't played, and it's got a nice fun little twist to it, and it's really fun to see them strategizing, like, how to put the land together to maximize the points, and Nessa loves to swipe the, what is it, the mines, isn't it? She always loves the mines, because they have all the extra points. And they stuff. have lots she of flags, or crowns. The little crowns, yeah. yeah, so she goes crazy on those, and it's really neat to see them start to do the, um, um, I'm trying to think of the good word, almost the, the geometry of building your square, making it the square. That was probably her most challenging thing keep to it five by to five. keep it five by five, you know, it takes some work sometimes when you're trying to plan it out and you're like, oh, this one piece sticks out. So what am I going to do about that? And they're learning how to turn the tiles around. And I just, I, I love so many things about this game. It's a really fun one. Yeah, yeah. I thought about this one and and I agree with your choice. But to me, it just, it, it seems a lot more tactical to me because you only see a little bit ahead and you got to mm, react. That's true. You got re- to react to what's, because you only have... I mean, basically, you only know the next turn what you, what's available, right? I mean, yeah, you can yeah. have some long-term strategy. Hey, I'm going to go for mines. Hey, I'm going to go for water. But it's really looking at your next decision. You go, okay, what's the best for me? And the next, what's best for me? What's best for me? But I guess, at least with, like, the kiddos in general, I see them actually strategizing long game. Like, Nessa's always like, you know what? I'm going to go for the mines. And she just, the entire yeah. game, she, like, tries, she builds around her idea that she wants to do that. It's really cute. Um... I, I mean, you don't have to do it that way, obviously, but it's kind of interesting to see that a lot of times they'll base their entire map off of what they get the first round. Yeah. And yeah. so... I guess, I, yeah. I said, there is strategy there. I just, I just, mm-hmm. I felt more, in my head, it felt more tactical. I than, could, no, I, I totally see that. But it's a good one. It's see that one. hair? He went, weep. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Yeah. I'm not a super big fan of the game. It's kind of, kind of meh for me. It's a little light for you. It is. My number six, we're doing six. Yeah. My number six is. Ooh, ooh, I like you that pick too. San Juan. That's a good one. A great introduction to multi-use cards. Yeah. Right. Ooh, right. that would be. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Multi-use yes. cards. Yep. Yeah. Love it. And this. it's basically a you take Puerto Rico, which I think is maybe a little too heavy for this list potentially, and kind of scales it back a little bit and makes a nice little card game out of it. So yeah, yeah. I think uh, this one may be uh, maybe the edge for some people that play family games. This may be a little bit much, but um, I think it's 
But I think it's one of those that if you had someone that's good, that knows the game and is able to teach it well, I think you could bring a lot of people into that game with a little bit of guidance that haven't gamed. Uh, yeah. It's, you're right, it's not like the best for a intro game. Yeah, I mean, it's, not it's definitely not a heavy game at, no. at all, but, um, but there, I think it's, there's it's a lot going on. on. Yeah. So. That's my number six, San Juan. Number six, San Juan. Yep. There you go. I can talk to, it's, it, it's basically Puerto Rico, but... Lighter. But lighter, yep. yeah. Yeah, Puerto Rico light. <laughs> I like that. But yeah, I like, I like the cards with that one. It's just, it's really fun. It's really fun to go through and be like, okay, this is the resource. I want to stack that up and well, yeah, build a little well, engine the, with the card it. You can use the card for its use. It could become a resource. It could come, I mean, it just, yeah. it's a good, like I said, a good intro to uh, multi-use cards. Yep. Good stuff. All right. My number five is probably our only crossover. <laughs> <laughs> and that is Stone Age. He was already talking about learning the dice mitigation and things like that. And yes, it's an awesome stepping stone for learning worker placement. But there's also the feed your people aspect that are in so many of the Euro games, right? And this one's fun because they have that chance that they can throw anybody, as many people as they want, to go hunting at any time. <laughs> and you need to decide when you're going to do that. Or do you build up that little engine that gives you the free food every turn? Or do you do a little of both? Balancing this out, you've got these decisions that are going to um, weigh heavily there and, and impact what you're going to do in the future. So you need to plan ahead to make sure that your people are not eating rocks or losing victory points for you <laughs> during your turns. And... The, you know, it's fun. This is another one of those that's got a great kinetic thing uh, going for it, too, because you've got all these great little pieces, and you've got the little colored uh, sticks of wood and the little pieces of gold. you got the little gold bricks and all this stuff, and people are moving around and playing with stuff, and it's great for, well, all ages, really, but, you know, the kids are going to like that part of it, too, because it's not just, you know, rolling and moving. They get to stack up their little pile of stuff and then go buy a hut and then they can build this little player mat up and it's, I don't know, it's really fun. All ages like that one. And mm -hmm. it has a stinky dice cup. It does have a stinky <laughs> dice cup. Although ours doesn't really stink. No, it's not. It I was going to say, ours hasn't gotten the sweaty, it's leather, stinky so. leather yeah, yeah. thing I think, I, I guess people that have a lot of humidity maybe, I don't know. Well, we have quite a bit of humidity. I think it's people with sweaty hands. We must not maybe, have any sweaty maybe. hand people playing it. Or I thought for sure this was going to be your number one, so I'm, I'm curious what your next four are. I'll never tell. Oh, wait. <laughs> I'll never tell. All right. Onward. My number five. Your number five. I don't know what it is until I click on it. Oh, my gosh. I hope nothing crashes. <laughs> my number five Ooh, is Artifacts, Inc. That's a fun one. Artifacts, Inc. That is another kind of area control game. It teaches you card drafting. It teaches you dice rolling, dice man manipulation, all sorts of, of stuff. It it's kind of plays off of Stone Age in that way. But it um, there's several different strategies that you can do in this game. There's the area control in the museum. There is going diving, deciding whether you want to focus in on that. There's collecting those cards that give you in-game bonuses. Yep, yep. There is uh, like the area control in the museum. There's several different museums based on different kinds of artifacts. You can decide which ones you want to go for. If someone's going for one, you might want to go for a different, or maybe you want to challenge them in that in that area. So it's got lots of different strategies. It's super light, lots of dice and rolling. Fun game. Yes, that is a really fun game. You know what? We should introduce that one to Caitlin, too. We haven't played that one with her. I think she'd like it. But, yeah, it's just, again, it's one of those, two. It comes in this cute little box, but it actually kind of sprawls out a little bit because you're laying out all the different cards that are your options to buy and stuff, and I I like that. It's kind of fun to let everybody see the, that box expand, right? Because it really is a deceptively small box, and then the way you lay out the game and everything, it's like, ooh, what's going on with this game? Yeah, yeah. It kind it, of intrigues it definitely, people. It definitely uh, takes up a lot of table space for a little tiny box. Yeah. Yep. So, that's a good one. That's fun. I like that game. All right. What's your number four? My number four is Takanoko. Ooh, way too fast. Okay, give me a second. Come on. Come on. Got to keep up. <laughs> Takanoko! Takanoko! That's a good one. I thought about this one. This is on my short list. This one, oh my gosh, the visual appeal of this game, the artwork, inst it, like insta win, because you've got these cute little pandas and these pretty tiles you're laying out, and the bamboo that stacks on itself of a variety of colors. And then you've got the little chibis expansion, which my girls are just like gaga over, even though it's just the little cardboard the little pieces. Cardboard they're pieces. like, ah, I got babies! And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Whatever, they love it. 
So it's a really cute little game. You're, it's, you're placing up tiles, and you've got three different sets of cards. You've got cards that are the goals that you want to achieve, and it's based off of what tiles, like you make a pattern, like you have three green ones in a row, or make a curve with them, or this and that. Or you have to grow a certain set of bamboo. You can only grow a certain number of them three high or something like that. You get a bunch of points once you achieve that. Or whatever the panda eats, a certain amount of types of things, then you can turn that in for your card. And once you get to a certain number of points off, no, it's not points, it's off of how many goals you accomplish, then that triggers the end of the game. And then whoever's got the most points from those cards is how you win. And it's just so cute because like you roll the dice and it tells you the weather for the day. So if there's a lightning storm, it scares the panda and he runs to some other part of the board. And so they get, you know, ah, the little panda runs and it's just really cute. You've got the sunny day and you get to do an extra move because it's nice out and you can move the little gardener guy around and where he goes, the plants grow better and just a really cute, adorable game. But they're also planning out long term. Okay, I've got these gold cards in my hand and it's going to take several turns to try to get this stuff to grow or to make sure you've got your water built out from the center to because every tile has to be watered and it's just really there's so much going on with this game and it's deceptively light looking but there's really quite a bit of thought you have to put into you know your end game for that one so yeah and the, i think the the real strategy comes in when you when you take more cards right what are you doing well at? What 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 do you what? Yeah. That, based on how the board is set up, which is your best card to take? Yeah. Is it is it to take the one with the different kinds of bamboo? Is there lots of ban different sizes of bamboo out, or is it there are lots of tiles out? So you want to get yeah. the ones that are patterns, or you know you have lots of eaten bamboo. Do you do you grab another bamboo yeah. card? So it, it's it's. It's got all kinds of different. That's a good choice. It was on my short list. Didn't quite make my list, but great choice. Great choice. Too light for your list. Too light for my list. <laughs> something like that <laughs> alright my number four is I'll find out in a second it was mentioned in the chat already was it? it is Emotep the quintessential family strategic game <laughs> then why isn't it your number one? because I don't like it as much as my number one. Oh, so it's only semi quintessential family strategic game. <laughs> <laughs> this one, the, but the thing about this this game is it's super Euroy. It doesn't have yep. it doesn't have that. Um, I don't know. It doesn't doesn't. I mean, the themes there. It's it's a beautiful looking game. Uh, it's 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 really interesting. But there's not that. I guess you know that fun or that that interesting things are happening yeah. or, or the randomness or anything like that so yeah that's why it's a little lower on my list because it's not it doesn't have that oh my gosh that happened kind of thing on it you know it doesn't have the you know weird things going on you're not you're not really i don't know i yell at people when they move my boat <laughs> oh my gosh that did not just happen i say that but maybe that's just me so so emotep <laughs> in this game you have a a I guess a quarry, I think it what it represents, a sled, and you, you take your stones and put them on boats, and then the boats go to different areas of the board, and when the boat gets to a certain number of stones on it, it can be moved, and, and anyone can move it, even if they have stones on the boat or not, and then it goes so to an area of board, and then you take the actions on that area, basically you either draft cards, or you create yeah. a, a pyramid, or different things, so... There, this game can be a little mean because you could set up your boat that like, got all set up for a great then move someone's and, like, and someone moves it to a place <laughs> that, that you don't want it to go to, right? So there's some strategy there in terms of at what point do I move the boat? Do I risk it? What, what is everyone else doing? What are they focusing in? Are they going to leave my boat alone, maybe? Or do, do I risk another turn to, to put another stone on? Um and then the different areas, who, who's going for what? Who, are you focusing on the pyramid? Maybe I'm going to do something else, right? Yeah, yeah. There's that. Pretty awesome. That's a good pick. All right. You ready, IT person? Oh, I'm already cut off. Yeah, no, no comments? No, no okay. comment. Okay. I already was commenting along the way. Were you? Were you not paying attention? Oh, my gosh. Nah. He's falling asleep. I don't know. Kind of. <laughs> I'm ready when you are. My number three is... Frog Riders. Frog Riders. Frog Riders. Mm. Some of this is kind of tactical turn to turn, maybe as things pop up, but I've noticed too that because there's different colored frogs that you can collect, um, they each have a different ability. So they do different things. So you want to pick, because one of them will get you end game scoring cards. 
you really want to strategize and think about the end game from the get-go because if you collect certain patterns, they start to multiply those points very quickly. And you can run away with the game without people really noticing with some of those cards. And it's cutesy artwork, so I mean, it's going to, you know, and they got the little fairies riding on the frogs and they're hopping along the board with it. And it's all the different little lily pads and, oh my goodness, it's so cute. It's really easy to bring to the table because of that. And it really makes the the kids in particular, I think, think about, oh, each one does... It's kind of neat because it's got that unique ability for each one. So they have to think about, okay, I can do this. And then if I do that, I'll be able to do this with the other color later. So that it's kind of a uh, like a snowball effect. You know how to get a little engine going to build up your points. And I really like that. And it's got that little bit of almost like checkers to it in a way too because you're hopping over pieces and trying to plan it out so you get the kinds that you want. Yeah, the I, I think the strategy comes in, to, in, like you said, the gold cards. That's where the strategy is, right? Do I focus in on my gold cards that no one else knows I have? Do I focus mm-hmm. in on the public gold cards? Um, there's, yeah, there's, I still think it's pretty tactical too, though. It is. That's why I said it's both. Because you also can get those special movement cards using one color frog that will let you move like in an L shape instead or something. So there's almost a chess like thing to it where you can also say, Oh, I can get this kind of frog or land on this special place because I've got this new ability to move a weird way that no one else has. And I don't know. There's just, there's a lot going on with it. Yeah. You have to think about your individual turns, but you also need to think about your end game. Well, so and, and like you said, there's an engine building aspect. And the yeah. special power will help me collect these certain things that yeah. helps me with my goal. So, yep, so, that's a good one. Good it's, one. It's cute. It's just a cute game. I'm kind of mad. With oh, the frog riders. It's kind of mad. You're kind of mad sometimes. <laughs> All right. So, so the uh, the CPA in me influenced my next two picks. So. Is it power grid? Because I'll just smack you. No. Nope. Okay, because it's like... My number three is... <laughs> stockpile. This is a great introductory stock market game. And it's actually fun. Because I'm not and a if you definitely, if you, if you If you go with a very base game without any powers, yep. without any special abilities or anything like that, um, I think this is super lightweight. Um, and there is definitely a lot of strategy, I think, in this game in terms of... Um, do I hold my stocks and, and keep them for the end game? Because you get majority, if you have majority stocks, you get bonuses. Do I sell now? Do I want to wait a little bit and see if the price goes up? Mm-hmm. Is someone else in, earlier in the in the round is selling, what does that mean? Does that mean the stock's about to tank? Do I need to sell mine too? There's a there's a lot of different strategy in it. And it may kind of come off as a heavy game, but I don't think it's that heavy. I think it's definitely a family weight stock market game. Now if you fun. now if you bring in the superpowers and use the advanced board and you pull the expansion in, um, it starts the ramping up the, the heaviness a little bit. But even then if you just throw the whole thing in, it's still, I still think it's a family weight game. Well what's fun about that too is as people are getting better at the strategy and the gaming, then you can add the layers on so it's got a higher replayability. Right. So that's that's pretty good. Yep. I like it. There you go. So I kind of handed what my next one is because it's economic as well. So think about what it might be. <laughs> Pretty sure I know what it is. Do you? Or maybe. No, you don't know what I it is. I bet I do. What's your number two? My number two is Santorini. And this one's probably my heaviest game in a way because like the last one you said, there's all this extra stuff that you can add to it. At the base game... It's kind of like somewhere in between, like, it's not quite as heavy as, like, chess or something, but you do have to think ahead so you don't box yourself in or lock yourself out. You have to think ahead moves, and you also need to think of the turn. It's got the tactical and the strategic aspects to it. I don't know. It's kind of tough to explain, but at the same time, as you go into more complicated versions of the game, you've got the god powers, and everyone's got a different ability from each other which i think is kind of neat they even have a little guide in there about telling you which 
which gods and goddesses' abilities don't really work together in, like, a two-player game versus, you know, and, like, all this. I really like how they explain that and set that up so you can play an easier game. And then if everybody's like, oh, this is easy, I got this, then you can say, okay, well, we're going to trick it up a little bit. And there's some, some of the god powers are pretty easy, and then they've got some that are pretty tricky. So they've got several layers of difficulty, and it's just, it's an adorable game. I mean, it's one of those that they... Honestly, they overproduced it, but it was it, in such a beautiful, awesome way. Because it could have been just like a boring little, um, one of those, you know, the, the very basic looking chess sets that don't really have much difference to them. They're kind of like, blah. They could have just made this with little pieces or chits or something. But instead, they did this beautiful 3D reproduction with the buildings and the cute little um, rooftops. And just really pretty game. And it kind of brought a lot of abstract you know, life to the game, so. Yeah, I'm not a super big fan of Abstract. Your choice is a great choice, because if someone likes that kind of game, this is perfect for oh, families. Oh, awesome, yeah. But uh, it's funny, because I don't think, when I think Abstract, I don't think strategy game, but it's Abstract Strategy Games is what they call them, so it's funny. It's Because your decisions do influence the long term. Oh, yeah. It's, it's just, uh, I, I, I don't know, when I think of strategy games, I think, well, if I do this, you know, if I, I have this, this path to victory, someone else has this other path to victory, but in abstract strategy games, there's usually just one way to win, right? Yeah. Um, so, but your decisions influence that end game greatly, right? They have a direct impact on how the game is Yeah, because go. once you build up something, if you block yourself from it, you're not going to be able to rec you know, rec recover from that, and you can knock out one of your people. I mean, we've gotten, I played and <laughs> kind of got my guy cornered, and was like, huh, he can't. They have to step up each level. Well, yeah. And you're stuck, and you're like, well, well what yeah. am I going to do with the one play? Yeah, there's, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah it's, there's, that's definitely, yeah, there, there is strategy in terms yeah. of do you want to try to box your opponent in? Do you want to try to move away to one side of the yeah. board and hopefully he doesn't close enough to do something? Um, yeah, that's, that's a good choice. It's a good yep. one. But like I said, I'm not a super abstract strategy. Yeah, oh, I fan. love it. So, so it's fun. Fun, fun, fun. And mine, mine has already been guessed in the chat. They know me too well. I, can I guess then? Yes. Can I guess? I'm going to guess either two or one's going to be Airlines Europe. My number two is Airlines Europe. Yeah! Airlines Europe! Now, now I, think, I think Ticket to Ride would be a valid game for this list, but I think, for me anyway, that one's too light. And uh, there's definitely some strategy to it, but... Airlines uh, has more, yeah. Yeah, but Airlines, Airlines has Europe more. has Ticket to Ride on top of stock manipulation and trying to get majority and do you do you sell, do you buy, do you do this or that? There's, yeah. a lot, there's lots of different things going on, sorry, um, with Airlines Europe and I think it's a better game for this list than like Ticket to Ride is. <gasps> Ticket to Ride's like the quintessential family game. Yeah, but it's... It's not that strategic. It kind of plays itself for the most part. I don't know about that. But I mean, I there, guess, is, there, yeah. there is some get, strategy and blocking and things like that. But man, you're gonna get you're gonna get smack now. Get, Airlines Europe is light a, up the chat. It is it is a route building game that meets stock market. So it's a stock it's market like, route building like, game. Yeah, I was gonna say it's like a perfect storm of your, some of your favorite mechanisms. Well, it's one of my all-time favorite games and I think it's definitely family cool. weight and maybe like it may be like all of my games on the list it's maybe a little bit on the heavier side for what we're talking 8 to 10 year olds type of game. Yeah, but, but then again, no. Uh, I don't yeah. Building a route once you figure out how to do that, that's pretty big. Yeah, but to, under, to understand the yeah to understand the strategy though of watching what people are doing and keeping majority in stocks and things like that. Yeah. It's, it's a little strategy to it. Yep. There you go. All right, you ready for my numero uno? I don't, I don't even know what it could possibly be. What? I don't know what it could be. Hmm. I'm curious. I want to think it's a two-player game, but I guess not. It is not. It's not a two-player I didn't pick any two-player games because All right. I All right, let me have consider it. family game that. My number one... Has actually been mentioned before. Ah, okay. Yeah, and sure. I do believe it is a very nice, perfect example of a strategy game. And that would be Imhotep. Or as they say in The Mummy, Imhotep. Oh, jeez. I know, I love that. I think that every time I see that game. So, Imhotep. You've got a lot going on. You've got, what is it, four or five different 
little zones. I'm trying to remember now. Four, have, I think. Yeah, gosh. It's been a little while since Cards, the temple. The pyramid uh, thing. Pyramid and the obelisk. Yep, yep. And so each one does a slightly different thing. There's a different way to score on each one. And you, again, not to re like rehash everything that Hunter said, but you need to pick when you're going to fill up the boat, which boat you're going to fill up, when you're going to move the boat, how are you going to sneak this past someone? Should you spoil somebody else's turn and move their stuff so they don't get a massive amount of scoring points and this and that? There's a lot of strategy going on in this light game. And it's what's great about it is the strategy is easy to teach. And it's fun because it's very tactile. It's very visual because you can see what you're building. I There's just a lot of appeal to it. I really like this game. I think it's a great... I think it's a good gateway game, too, on top of being a great family game. Because this is one of those that people of all ages are going to like to play with. So, Yeah, now that you're talking about it, I, I, I just thought that the cards adds a whole other level of strategy. Because the cards, you have set collection in the cards, which you can go for that. There's yeah. also um, some in-game scoring things, which yeah. you can collect that you can build. Basically, base, collect those, then you can focus in on, on getting things. Or take those because you've already done a lot of yeah. that one thing. And there's also the cards that give you like an extra turn or let you do something. The special you, abilities are You have to really fun. decide when to when to, when's the best time to use. Those yeah, because that can be a real coup for you if you use that at the right time. You might be able to, you know, snatch out a victory when you weren't originally going to get one if you play that at the right time, or waste it. <laughs> you can go either way. It's pretty fun. All yeah, right, my number one, uh, before I talk about my number one. Oh geez, here yeah, we I go. Got, I gotta clarify. Oh geez, so, clarify. The reason it's my number one is because, like I said, in some of the other games, you don't have that fun factor and that, oh my gosh, that just happened kind of thing going on. Uh, this, is it War of the Ring? No, yeah, <laughs> War of the Ring. That's awesome. <laughs> no? Not so much? No. Okay. My number one is... <laughs> oh, yeah. Clank. Clank. It's a dungeon delving, deck building... <laughs> crazy pull stuff out of bag game and there's definitely a lot of strategy in this do you try to gather as much stuff as you can before you leave do yeah. you jump in and jump out really fast yeah. to try to try to, to to mess with people that way um do you what do you focus in on your deck do you focus in on a lot of combat stuff so you can fight monsters yeah. do you focus in on lots of movement so you can move around the board you there's there's just a lot of a lot of different and layers. And you're right when you're drawing out of the bag to see if the dragon gets you or whatever. Oh gosh, that's so funny. Our last game we played, every single time I drew out of the bag, I picked one of yours. Every single time. Oh yeah, last without time without exception. And I didn't. I survived. Too. And somehow he barely squeaked out a victory. I'm like, how? I was buying all this did stuff. You do that? I was running around looking for healing potions so that I could heal. It was so pitiful. I was like, why? How are you not dead yet? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty fun. It's. It's awesome. It's just a really fun game. And while while I was looking up, pulling off pictures and stuff for the the video, I noticed that I had no clue. Clank is right number three family game on Board Game Geek right now. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah. That's cool. So I, I didn't I didn't notice that until I went to pull the picture off. I was yeah. Like, wow, three number three. That's crazy. That's awesome. Yeah, because it's it's a cool game and it's really fun. And it's just funny because you know you can kind of over dramatize the whole dragon thing and jumping in and diving and grabbing the the cool treasures and beat somebody to the higher point ones and getting the what is it you get a key so you can go through the special hallways that otherwise you're locked out of and oh my goodness a lot of fun stuff going on in that game or like you what did you have last time you had some boots or something that clunked around or you had something that <laughs> something was just... that lets you sprint and it caused oh yeah he's like clunk, 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 one, of the reasons, <laughs> one of the reasons that led to me getting uh, was, my thing that was pretty amazing tubes drawn out yeah that was amazing he's like i'm gonna go do this it's like he was shouting down the halls it was fantastic it's really fun to do that you're looking up the yeah i was curious what the where i said it was number three i was curious what the 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 top ones are number one seven wonders and a lot of people mention that oh yeah that's a good um, one it's a good one i i don't know i've kind of this should be one of my games I've outgrown. I, I, yeah, I, you kind of act like I've you kind, have outgrown now. And yeah. number two is Patchwork. The reason, Ooh. and I, I didn't pick any two-player games either. for the same reason. Because I don't think Family Game. I, I it's, think it's more I, than two-player. Yeah, it's like I'll play you. I'll play you, and then I'll play one of the kids, and then you'll play one of the kids. I mean, it doesn't quite Not so much. work that way. And then Crokinoles Four. Don't ask me 
why, but it is. People love that game. We need to get <laughs> And then the Santorini. Oh, Santorini. Yeah. So. Nice. Look at that. All oh, right. Come on. There you have it. My number one, Clank. That's good. You know, and it was hard for me to pick a lot of these because I was thinking of games like Dragonwood and New York Slice and honestly, like the Duke and Onitama that are like chess-esque games. But again, I was thinking, okay, I eliminated the two-player stuff mm -hmm. and some of the others, you know, again, tactics versus strategy and stuff like that. And I don't know. It was kind of hard to build the the lower end of my list for that reason because family games cover such a wide swath because everyone thinks of family games differently well yeah and I mean, honestly we think of family games differently than yeah. just the two of us right now versus um even like two years ago because family games back then would have been like stuff that nessa could sit in on so it'd probably be a shorter game that she didn't mind moving the pieces for us for or something you know or and now she's playing those games so i think of games that would kind of lean that direction and now you're like more on the the Katie try. And honestly, like Caitlin, for example, too, it just depends on the kid. She is an omni gamer. She plays Firefly, so it's a pretty heavy game. She has no problems playing that game on her own. But she'll still sit and play out Fox with her sister and loves playing that. Right. And she still loves playing pretty you know, pandemic. She likes to play, you know, just something of all these different layers. It just depends. But she's used to playing those games. Some kids are not gonna be able to handle something like Firefly, or maybe they can jump ahead and you know they're playing power grid <laughs> with the adults you never know so it just depends on the kid and how many games they've played or you know right. how their mind works yeah one thing i was surprised about your list i knew it would be lighter than mine but i also was shocked it wasn't more cooperative games on your list because I, i'm not a big fan of co-op games just personally but i think co-op games are great for families because yeah. um you can if they get stuck you can help them a little bit i mean you don't want to alpha game your kids but if they <laughs> They, 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 they <laughs> but, but a lot of times they want to bad gamer. Like you, you could do this or you could do that or you could do that and let them have, have choices and you can kind of guide them through the game, yeah. right? Whereas it's a competitive game, then then you could still do that, but it's I guess it's not quite the same. It's right. You have to. Well, you have to. You have to. Yeah, it, it, it could be obvious that you're hurting yourself by helping them, right? Whereas with a co-op game, you go, hey, you can come over here and cure this. Thing. Like for a make, you can move your guy here and cure this, or you can use this special power and do this, or you can... Well, I think things. we solved that problem, though, by having the learning game. Our first game is always the learning game. It doesn't really count whoever right. wins because everyone's still learning the rules, and this is when we all help each other. It's almost co-op in a way, even though we have a clear winner. But I also... I'm a fan of cooperative games to a point with families and the reason is I really think it's important to teach your children about healthy competition yeah. honestly you need to learn that's how life works you have a clear winner and you usually have a clear loser it's right. going to happen and you're going to end up being on both ends of the spectrum at some point on something you need to learn how to handle that gracefully and what a better way to do that than to start in a safe secure setting where it doesn't really matter who, which end you're on because you're playing a game right. but how you handle that is going to kind of help train you and i think you need to have some competitive games in that oh, i agree but... i mean there's a point where we need to have the we're all winners game and we need to learn how to work together too but you get tons of group projects in schools you'll have to deal with that too but <laughs> you you need to learn how to handle competitive games and i think it's really not too early to start on that because you can, again, like you said, help kind of guide everybody through and work up to it. Yep, so. yep. There, there you go. go. Two very different lists. We had, did have some crossover. I didn't think we would. I didn't have... think we would. That kind of shocked me. So down in the comments, tell us what your favorite strategic family games are and tell us why our list is so, so, so wrong. <laughs> well... Re Rebecca's going to exit us and then I'm going to play the intro video again so you can hear the music. <laughs> Because he didn't get it the first time around. <laughs> All right. That's so, awesome. So hold on. Go ahead. Start. Right, right. Oh, yeah. Slowly exit us while I get set Sl up. Slowly, huh? <laughs> no, thank you guys so much for joining us. And hopefully we will be... We're going to be... I, I don't know if you can see it. Did you push it off screen? It's off screen. See? We got oh, Arcadia Quest. Arcadia up. Quest is on the front half of our table here. <laughs> We've been filming and playing. And we may even do another episode filming tonight. So we're, it's going to be coming soon. So stay tuned. And to add on to that... We have something new? No. I've, I've compiled my top 100 list. Oh, I didn't it's know this. It's not in order yet, but I have the, the things. I'm going to use the Pub Meeple uh, little... Oh, the little program to okay. select them. I haven't done that before. So a little shout out to Pub Meeple. Uh, they have a uh, a ranking 
uh, little program, software. Yeah. You put a list of games in, and then it tells you to do like this or this, and you just click, 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 do that 10,000 times, and then you have a top whatever Yeah, but it's kind of fun because you're like, do you like this game better, or do you like this game better? And you're like, ooh, good choices. It's really fun. So, yeah, so now you're going to be looking forward to, in the semi-near future, Hunter's Top 100 in installments, and our Adventures in Arcadia Quest in installments also. So have a good one. Thanks for joining us, guys. You're awesome as always. See you soon. And B here Bye. is our music. We hope. Maybe. Potentially. Psych! No sound. That didn't work. Ah! Here's the music. <laughs> I don't know why the desktop audio is not working. I'm firing my IT guy. Bloopers. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> so sad. Next time we'll get it right. <laughs> <laughs>